Hello. So this is the state all road 4130 bicycle from state bicycles. And I want to do a review for you because I don't think there are very many online yet at this point. It's uh, middle of December 2020 right now. And I've had this bike for about a week. Uh, so after riding about 100 miles on mixed terrain, I will offer my initial ride reviews, um, thoughts about the geometry, and then each of the components and my experience dealing with state. Um, basically, kind of the first time buying a bicycle online um, and that experience. So this is the 650B wheels. Uh, the state offers it with 700C or 650B. Uh, these are the Vittoria Barzo 2.1 uh, tires. So basically mountain bike tires on a road-ish bike. Um, and I think it's a really cool platform. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's excellent on like thick, chunky, loose gravel. Um, still fun on roads, obviously slower with the, the heaviness of the bike and the knobby tires, but the, the grip and the traction in wet, muddy, loose conditions is, is really fun. I'm enjoying the big tires and the knobby tires on it. So um, just a little bit of the specs. This bike comes with the state branded uh, group set, which is the Sensa group set, one by 11. Um, it's a 42 tooth chain ring and 11 to 42 cassette. So uh, smallest gear is, is a one to one ratio. And some people might find they want a little bit smaller just for climbing on loose terrain. Um, chain ring, you know, could be maybe swapped out to a 40 or 38 or, you know, whatever, depending on your, uh, where you're riding, what you're riding, what your strength is like, all of that. Um, but other than that, I do like this group set. The, the shifters are, there's only one, it's just the brake lever that you click once to down, to shift into a higher gear, into a smaller cog and then you click it over twice to shift um, into a lower gear. So the action's really smooth on those. The, the position of the hoods and like the shape of them, I really like the feel of. Um, as well as the bars, the drop bars, um, the amount of flare and drop on these is, is actually my favorite out of any other um, kind of dirt drops that I've ridden compared to um, some of the salsa, like the cow chipper and wood chipper, and then zip the zip service course I also really like, but these I might like even better. Um, and then just, you know, comes with the basic stock uh, saddle and pedals, but they do the job. To me, the saddle was actually pretty comfortable for, I did a long ride the other day, and for the first like four and a half hours, I was happy with the saddle. After that, it got a little bit uncomfortable, but most do. Um, pedals have plenty of these little uh, pegs here. feel like they're holding my feet well. I ride in just like uh, hiking boots, basically. And um, I guess I'll get into a little bit about the, the ride quality itself. So the, the overall ride feel is actually more nimble than I was expecting. It's a heavy bike, um, just it's, you know, it's thick overbuilt steel. It's great. It's going to last a really long time, but, um, yeah, I was, I wasn't expect, I was expecting more of sort of like this slow tank type feeling ride, but it's actually, the handling is pretty nimble. The chainstays are long, so it's, it's not, it's not a very, it's not, you know, you're not on a road bike, but it's stable for descending yet nimble enough to be really fun. Um, something about the long chain stays um when climbing especially with the lowest gear not not being lower than a one-to-one -one, you need to put a lot of power out um in order to maintain your speed but the long chain stays and the, the overall geometry of the bike you have to shift your weight like it's hard to keep your weight back enough to keep enough traction on the rear wheel basically i found it Oftentimes, I'd be, the rear wheel would be slipping a little bit um, just on loose gravel. Um, 
steep hills. So just something to be aware of. Um, you just gotta be conscious of trying to pedal as smoothly as possible. And a smaller chain ring would help with that. But yeah, just finding the right position, body position, having your weight back enough to keep traction on the rear wheel, forward enough to keep your momentum. Um, so yeah, it's not the best climbing bike, but I did feel it was very confident on the descents. Um, a lot of fun, especially again with these knobby, grippy, soft tires, just like I never felt like at all, like I was going to wash out. So that was fun. Um, the brakes, however, are pretty, there's just kind of no modulation. They are, I forget exactly what these are, what these brakes come stock with. They're just kind of basic cheap mechanical disc brakes. Um, they stop you, but it's kind of like all or nothing. It's just like you're on the brakes a little bit, nothing's happening really. You go a little farther and it just locks up. So you just got to get used to that. I'm probably, probably going to upgrade these brakes. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my take on it with the 650B wheel set. It's kind of like an off, off-road adventure type bike that's still fun to ride on the roads to get to where you want to go off-road. That's sort of my intended use for it. Um, I have put some of these, uh, these are the Blackburn Anything cages, which I was using for a water bottle. Nalgene on this side, and then this is a uh, Roadrunner buoy bag, which I was using to keep some extra layers in since it's the middle of December and kind of got a layer up and down as as needed. And then of course the voila straps, excellent for anything. So just had you know some pump some layers that I had taken off and uh, then this handlebar bag is uh, Rhino walk or something like that one of those cheap ones but it's actually it's fully waterproof and the size in my opinion is perfect you can fit like a whole bunch of snacks some extra things your phone wallet whatever um, there's this so I was keeping my phone in this front pocket other stuff in here. Um, so yeah, for me, this setup is is good to carry like what I need on a long day ride, kind of like an all day ride. Plenty of water, um, space for extra clothes, space for food. And um, in this little seat bag, I just keep, uh, you know, multi-tool, patch kit, whatnot. And a couple lights. Oh yeah, so another, just a little fun touch. I, I, I like the color scheme of this bike a lot. Um, aside from the price point and like what the platform itself is, um, I really like the color scheme. That's partly what sold me on it. So I added, I got a bunch of these wolf tooth, tooth components, um, anodized bolts. So, uh, I got purple, blue, orange, and yellow. Yeah, let me pull this out here. I do this. So <laughs> I just kind of added a little bit of color going down and everywhere pretty much that these bolts are but anyway um yeah so um overall i'm very satisfied with this bike um about 100 miles on it so far ready for the <laughs> first wash it really needs it but my experience with state itself um, in ordering this bike was pretty frustrating i have to say um i ordered the bike I think it was maybe the beginning of September or something like that. And it was, it was a pre-order. It was supposed to ship at the end of September. Um, and then I'm in New York, the bike was shipping from Arizona. I figured it would take a week or two to get here. Um, but I did get one email a couple days after the time that it was supposed to ship, that it was delayed and it would be a couple weeks before they get them in stock and then another week or two to process and ship. Um, that date passed. I still hadn't heard anything from state. And then I emailed them to just see what was up and say, you know, I haven't heard anything really looking forward to this bike, 
what's going on. And I didn't get a response one point. I emailed again and they did, they did respond and um, said there had been some delays in, in processing and it was probably going to be another couple of weeks. And then they sent an email about that update. Anyway, ultimately I got this bike on um, November 30th. So it was about two months later than anticipated, which I understand it's 2020. It's, you know, the world is, is a weird place right now. Um, but the lack of communication from state was very frustrating. They didn't really offer that information. I had to reach out for it and they didn't really still just kind of say it's going to be a while. They just sort of set a date and then didn't say anything after that date had passed a couple times. So that was frustrating. Um, and then the other thing, so when I, when I unpackaged the bike, um, the derailleur hanger was bent, which happens in shipping. Um, and normally to correct that you would take off the derailleur itself to either straighten the hanger or replace it. However, the bolt that attaches the derailleur to the hanger was stripped. Um, so I could not get the derailleur off. This is going to be a problem um, for future rides, you know, I don't want to never be able to get my derailleur off. So I need to get in touch with them, see if they can do anything about that. Send me a new one or something. Um, and it also shipped without a ferrule on the end of the shift cable. So it's a bit frayed. Um, I got to put one on there, but yeah, so a couple details that I was not impressed with and actually very frustrated with. Uh, I was able to bend the derailleur hanger back, uh, you know, the way you're not supposed to do it, basically, by leaving it attached. I just put wrapped a towel around here, uh, took a big pair of pliers, straightened it out. It's not indexing perfectly still, but it's rideable. It's pretty close. Um, so that's something I still need to work out. And then also this lump here where the cable comes out of the shifter, um, there's kind of this big lump where the cable is, which is like right right at the base of your thumb muscle, it's very annoying. So I want to see if, uh, you know, if I can move that over, if that was just a poor design, a uh, poor um, assembly, or if that's just part of the design of these shifters, I'm not totally sure yet. So not a huge deal, but a little annoyance um, just to be aware of. Um, so yeah, that's, that I think is everything I can think of at this point. So I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching. Um, hopefully I'll do some more reviews of other bikes coming up in the future. Hey buddy. Okay, so just a few last thoughts I realized I forgot to say. Um, I do definitely recommend this bike. Uh, I didn't give a clear uh, decision one way or the other on that, but yeah, for $800, this is a, this is an incredible platform. It's a lot of bike for the money. Um, and it'll get you out there on, on these adventures, um, in cool places, having a lot of fun. So definitely I would say go for it. You can make a few upgrades in the future, um, to make it a little bit better and to suit your particular needs, but it's a great bike. I recommend buying it. Um, I would also add that Picking up both wheel sets, the 700C wheel set, as well as the 650B would kind of give you two different bikes. It would give you one that's a lot, kind of like a traditional gravel bike, um, more fun on like road gravel rides. And then this wheel set, which is more of like off-road adventure type riding, um, worth the extra 350, I think, in my opinion. Um, and State also offers a payment plan where you can pay in four increments every two weeks. So that kind of makes it easier to come up with the funds, um, which is what I did and it worked smoothly. There's no interest or anything. And also, so the wheels are through axle. Um, nice to have that modern standard. If you don't want to get the wheel set from them, you could build your own or find plenty of other higher end options. Maybe build up a dynamo wheel set, add some lights. Um, yep, that's about it. Thanks for watching.